In this video, I want to talk a little bit about between subjects variables and within subjects variables. So the sort of design an experiment or study has uh, is one of the ingredients that helps inform which sort of statistical test or which statistical test you might use to analyze the data from that experiment or study. And one determination that one may need to make is whether or not they are dealing with within subjects design versus a between subjects design or it can get more complicated where there's a mixture of the two but for now we'll just pretend that it's an either or uh, situation because that's where we are in terms of the analyses that we're covering so between subjects designs uh, are when participants are part of only one level of the independent variable so let's just assume it's an experiment and there's an independent variable and participants a, a given participant is assigned to only one level of the independent variable meaning that they only take part in one condition of the experiment and not more than one condition uh, of the experiment and then comparisons are made to see if there is a difference in the group means between the conditions. So let's for now just pretend that there's two conditions, let's say an experimental group and a control group. A given participant might be randomly assigned to either the control group or the experimental group and in the end a comparison would be made between let's say the mean level of the experimental group and the mean level of the control group to see if there is a uh, difference and if we can reject the null hypothesis. Uh, these sorts of designs might be necessary in some conditions. It might in some situations where it may be impossible uh, to put people into multiple um, levels of the independent variable. It also may be important if being in multiple conditions could ruin the experiment. For instance, by making the hypothesis tr transparent to the participants and kind of uh, leading them to give a certain result so this sort of design might be important in a, in a number of situations uh, the between subject variables are not always experimental so it could be like a naturally occurring variable or a quasi experimental variable it could be something like like uh, sex male or female right so that would be a between subjects variable because you know, generally speaking a person would be would be classified as being either male or female uh, and, and not both. Of course there may be some exceptions to that but, but I'm generally speaking. All right. Within subject variables on the other hand are when participants take part in each condition or each level of the independent variable and then uh, comparisons are made within participant to see if there are differences or a change between one condition and another. Uh, these sorts of designs are often more statistically powerful than between subjects designs. Uh, so that they might even be more preferred uh, than between subjects designs, but they can't be used in all situations. And in some situations, they might lead to problems that are called order effects or carryover effects, where being in one condition could influence your responses in a subsequent condition. And these are also, within subjects designs, there's a uh, another term that's sometimes used called repeated measures design and they're not always experimental it might just be looking at a change over time so if I were to measure your enthusiasm for this course at the beginning of the course versus halfway through the course uh, I'm not really conducting an experiment in the sense that I'm introducing a manipulation and having a comparison group or a control group but I could still use uh, a repeated measures design uh, to I could still describe that as a repeated measures design. Now, for the purposes of what we're covering now, which which are t-tests, uh, a when the independent variable or the explanatory variable has two levels, and participants are in one condition or another, but not both, and the outcome is an interval ratio variable we would likely opt to use what's called an independent samples t-test. So an independent samples t-test would go with a between subjects variable with two levels with an interval ratio dependent variable. Whereas a paired samples t-test would go with a within subjects design where participants take part in both conditions and we look at differences in their responses in one condition versus another. 
uh, assuming the outcome is interval ratio. So here's kind of a silly example using different types of Coca-Cola. So there's Mexican Coca-Cola and American Coca-Cola, and let's say our dependent variable is some uh, hypothetical taste satisfaction scale that we're going to assume is approximately interval um, in its measurement. So our independent variable then is Coke type, Mexican or uh, American Coca-Cola. So if it was a between subjects design, a person would show up for our taste test experiment and they would be randomly assigned to taste either the American or the Mexican Coca-Cola, but not both. And in the end, we would do a mean, a comparison of means using likely an independent samples t-test to see if there's a statistically significant difference between the people who were randomly assigned to American Coca-Cola versus those who were randomly assigned to Mexican Coca-Cola. If it's a within subjects design, on the other hand, participants would show up to the experiment and they would be randomly assigned to maybe encounter one of these first and the other second. So they would they would taste each type of Coca-Cola. Uh, maybe we would do something in between to eliminate some of the carryover effects, like give them some sort of uh, sherbet that might clear their palate or something like that. Uh, but for, for the most part, what would happen here is participants would rate their taste satisfaction in each condition and we would compare within participant to see if there is a significant difference. So the advantage to this, the within subject design, would be that we would probably need fewer participants to get enough statistical power to see if there is a difference. Uh, the disadvantage is we would have those order and carryover effects. Between subjects design, the, the advantage would be we wouldn't have those order and carryover effects because participants are only encountering one type of soda. However, we would probably need many more participants and hopefully random assignment to ensure that we have more or less probabilistically similar people on average in each group, that the groups are similar on average. So as I've said, uh, with, within subjects designs, fewer participants are usually needed to have the desired level of statistical power. Uh, why is that? Well, it's because the participant-related extraneous variables are things that participants bring into the study, how thirsty they are, uh, how upset they are, um, whether or not they have a headache, any, any of the infinite number of things they bring into a study are basically controlled for, for the most part, because they are be participants are being compared with themselves. In other words, the scores are being compared within participant. And the disadvantages, I said, are order and carryover effects. So the soda, for the soda example, the soda that you taste first might influence how you experience the, so, the soda that you taste subsequently. Uh, for within subject designs, participants only take part in one condition, and we compare the groups. So, so in order for the groups to be probabilistically similar, they're not going to be identical, but hopefully probabilistically similar on most important variables, we usually need a larger sample to balance out the participant differences between groups. And hopefully we're also using uh, random assignment uh, or some other method to make sure that the groups themselves are similar. So just to take this back to where we began, I just want to reiterate that for t-tests, which is likely where you are now in the course, for an independent samples t-test that would be used when there are two levels of the independent variable. The outcome variable is interval ratio, and we want to compare the means between the two levels of the independent variable for the interval ratio dependent variable. Now, there are other conditions that, that should be met in, in order to make sure that the assumptions of the test are met, but for now let's just discuss the basics. For within subjects variable, that would be linked with a paired samples t-test. So a paired samples t-test, you would have two levels of the independent variable, but participants would take part in both conditions or both levels of the independent variable, and we would have an interval ratio dependent variable once again. All right, thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did.